we did, I think the Hood will update afterwards, right? We did get the pistol um, and it did go the way of Furia. You can tell yeah. by the buy that they have. You know, we 100% have that. So, after a bit of an extended pause getting everyone sorted, let us see. MIBR, are we expecting big things here on the force buy? Well, there's a heavy presence over here towards mid. So they are expecting, at the very least, a lean towards B, which is what MIBR have started with. But a lot of opportunities to try and turn that one around. I love that little Z is bought into a scout on round two here. It's it's a bit of a high-risk play, but we've seen what she can do with some sort of a sniper in her hand. So I think that this could be so spicy. Yeah, it, it's definitely an interesting one on the T side as well, right? On the CT side, it can kind of uh, mm -hmm. reap rewards pretty easily. A few tags work with the Deagles. But on the T side, it's harder to approach the angles with the scout, really. You have less room for error. But we have indeed seen Olga get taken down. Maybe a bit of an oversight. However, Furia, the B defense, has managed to get themselves in pretty deep here. Maybe need to be finding these kills early. The A1S comes up big. Gabby uses the fact that they're distracted by her teammate, though, to her advantage. Now just two remaining with the rotation coming in. There's that scout coming into play, however. But the bomb is up in the apps, I think. And both mm -hmm. these players that are down, unfortunately, nowhere near it, right? So going to be very, very tough. It's, it's an interesting game state, very hard game state to deal with. And maybe even MIBR changing... Uh, their minds on what they want to do in this round, right? Try and look for a bit more damage rather than going for the round itself. They go for a, a two-person approach in towards the market. Doesn't work out. And they are just stacked on top of each other here. Ten seconds left. I don't think this is losable now for Furia unless everybody goes down in the final few moments of this round. Trying to throw yourself at it, though. You don't necessarily want to save and get that zero loss bonus. However, fly, it's kind of the only option. It was a solid attempt there um but yeah i mean we mentioned how it was a bit of a high risk that being said it feels like that they probably wouldn't have come out on top of this one just given the fact that they were at a huge deficit and while she does get a lot of damage off with it and they do uh, put a lot of damage into fury themselves i mean fury if they've got two usps here where they might have been able to buy up okay okay so they do buy in a little bit more there but they might have had might have been looking a little bit better here if they hadn't lost so many players in that previous round so they do some damage and we'll see if they can pivot off of that here yeah, it's going to be tough moving forwards, but uh, indeed, keep it into this round. See what the game plan is. Curiously enough, Hera getting the MP9 dropped across clearly got a small plan for that, and it was the underpass. However, she's heard, she's mollied out, can't really help her teammates here. So, going to be tough. First kill comes in. Olga on this A1S, holding it down a little better this time. Not going to get caught off. And the assistance is on the way. Flash over the top, but there's too many smokes around so uh, looking relatively good here furia you know don't overextend don't get too greedy to try and find the frags here weird timing there that's unfortunate for little z we'll lose her head and now things look even better right five on three four hp for fly not really expecting much from mibr and again the bomb has found its way into a very awkward spot so kind of unlucky in that sense a couple kills come in Hera might be able to do some more damage. But you're not really banking on it. I feel like Furia have such a good read on this defense, though. Like, in the previous round, they've got a very strong mid-presence, kind of expecting a potential B lean again and it works out quite nicely and this time they play a little bit more spread out of course it was a far faster rush from MIBR because they were just down onto like next to nothing so uh, immediately you get that information across and Fury just completely locked down mid really really well now is where MIBR actually get a chance to get back into this they've got a little bit of an advantage here in terms of weaponry okay we do have an op vr potential battle here car versus little z so we'll see which one comes out on top of that one Let's see car obviously posted up over towards the a site nowhere near as little z starts to rush over towards the b site hopefully they can kind of wedge themselves an opening here because there's a deep push into apps looking for this player that they know is consistently holding down that sight line seeing if they can get that opening so we're aggressing towards middle here um no presence the the one 
player has drawn a bit of a rotation. A, oh, solid rotation yeah. now. A full commit from Kara is quite deep. Now still banking on it. I don't rightly know. MIBR, you know, it, it's difficult to tell where even they are going. They are starting to approach up short, so it might work for them, uh, this little gamble. Maybe they've seen the early stages of this round in a demo somewhere. Car going to find the first and the second. Those two short players going down again. The bomb leading the way gives the game away quite early. And the setup is just going to be too strong now for only three players left, right? I think that mm. Furia once again are in the driver's seat here. Should be all said and done, you would assume. However, little Z, we've seen her in these types of scenarios before. When the pressure is on, maybe... <laughs> It can work out. Now, not going to be the crazy clutch coming in. It's actually Arkinia on that A side of things who has managed to find a kill, free up some space, but little Z can't get away. Only 10 seconds left. Arkinia looking for damage and probably now on 17 HP trying to survive, or I guess, yeah, indeed, throw yourself at it so that you get the loss bonus. Still, though, Furia, really clean opening rifle. Really surprising to see a little bit of a, a fumble, I suppose. You know, we have one player in Hera who manages to draw out a three-person rotation from Furia all the way over towards the B site. And that information, it takes too long to feed back. MIBR kind of stall out a little bit. They don't push that advantage. And they just wind up walking into Furia's crosshairs. So I want to see a little bit more of actually gaining being able to gain that info, being able to kind of push in on it, because if you're stalling out, we mentioned this, this has been a big problem for some teams uh, last week, and if you consistently find yourself in that position where you're not actually pressing in, you give the enemy team time to stabilize. So, classic execute coming in here off the back of the pistols, however, being well read, being well counter flashed, and I think... That might be it for this round. Not even going to break into the site cleanly, to be honest. Little Z, the only one left with nothing but a Glock. Bomb's not led the way this time, though. So that is certainly something that seems to be uh, patched up, so to speak. But uh, again, a few little things getting in the way where um, smokes go down. If you're going for a full execute like that, maybe have to respect and let them go down. You lose a player very early on because she jumps out slightly early. You know, things uh, of that kind just need tightening up a little bit, right? In mm -hmm. a scrim, in a pug, you might get away with that. You might even find a, a frag here, but Furia are, of course, on another level and they will be dialed in to this game. So um, those kind of liberties that you can take against other, other players, other teams, not going to work here. Yeah, as much as they, as much as MIBR might have done a little bit of that anti-stratting, Furia just showing once again what a exceptionally dynamic team they are and how easily they're able to adapt to whatever MIBR are throwing into them. So once again, uh, MIBR finally able to buy up again, and it's been really rough on the buys. Uh, yes, they've had lost streak bonuses, but because they just consistently are losing, it's very up and down. They haven't been able to find a stable advantage to try and press in on. With Olga being so low, maybe if they can get that one kill in. Again, they're doing a little bit of faking, making a little bit of noise towards one side. Now they start moving in towards A. It's far less heavily defended. If they don't stall out here, if the fake on B is good, let's see if they can wedge in. They're getting a bit cheeky, getting a bit confident on that furious side. A, a one way from Olga there at middle. So... We'll see here. And of course, a, a fair amount of utility remaining for Furia. Keep them at bay. However, this time we've got a good amount of time for MIBR. Mari in a deadly angle though. Oh, the Molotov is not spread. Are you kidding? It cannot get any luckier than that. Goodness hey. gracious me. Little Z will manage to find Olga finally, but... <sighs> what a moment for Mari. I mean, you know, it, it just really could not be predicted and i think that's unfortunately what's happened to mibr here they don't really know how to adapt because you know you've got two players swinging out thinking there's no one under belt yeah that's crazy that's heartbreaking i mean it, it usually those lineups come down to pixels and if you're off by a sliver of a pixel and then suddenly your molly isn't covering exactly where you need it to so you think you've cleared it as we just saw and you haven't and it's something so simple that can snowball a winnable round into, I mean, here it is exactly. This was so doable if they had spotted her under there, but unfortunately they don't. Uh, and it's just a massacre on the site at that point because they're taken so off guard. It, 
there's a chance it could have ended up in a trade. But again, we've mentioned how good these Furia players are. So they're very good at taking advantage of those small mistakes and leveraging them into round wins. And again, Made in Brazil found in a very tough position here. Okay, they can buy in, so that's good. But, you know, as we head into the next round, it's going to be really, really iffy. And very likely, Furia will be on seven rounds at that point. It's, it's starting to run away from them. And they need to get themselves back into this. They need to start building up, or rather, they need to stop Furia from building up that massive buffer. Because, you know, once we swap sides, it could just be a little bit of a home stretch and not an uphill battle. And they want to avoid that as much as possible. Two quick out towards B then. Just kind of chilling to get control. One going under, one staying above. It's nice to see cars being pretty all over the place with this AWP. Mm -hmm. And uh, not, you know, particularly flashy, but 12 and 1 right now. So I don't think they want to meet her early on in a round, you know, try and keep her at bay kind of thing. So a bit slower on the upswing this time, but MIBR, it's it's solid kind of mid control. You know, mm -hmm. you have someone coming in from under, um, able to work together a bit better. Because I think that's another thing that we've seen on a couple of these bombsite approaches. The um, spacing has not been as good as you'd like, right? They're maybe relying a bit too much on the executes and a bit too much on, okay, this molly is designed for this spot. Hopefully that'll push someone out and we can get an easy kill. When that's not the case, you've got to be tight. You've got to be ready to go on the traits. And mm -hmm. uh, reactively, they've not been as solid. 40 seconds left. It looks like an A hit here. And I think this should be a pretty solid one of that. Oh, the fact that they're moving so far away from the AWP as well. Oh, but oh, Olga. Stunning kill there. I believe that's Olga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wrong name in the kill feed. But again, I mean, we spoke about what a star she is. And look at that. How does she get that much value? Little Z is the last person left alive. And okay, we've seen her in these positions before. But it wasn't against Furia. And that's going to be another round in the bag here. Oh, it's looking rough. Yeah, and I mean, you know, now we're getting more individual plays activated, actually. Um, this type of play especially is just continuous facing. There's there's a flash in there, of course, but they're all dry. No real assistance from anyone else and still three pretty crisp. The third one takes a bit of work, but three pretty crisp headshots. Mm -hmm. It's not the best of signs. And everything that we were touting for Furia, you know, they, they have these individuals, they have... This kind of aggressive play style is all going right. MIBR, um, not so much, right? And this is their map pick again to, to remind folks. So the mid-rounding that we were talking about is looking a little rough. They're not really able to find a, a way into the round, let alone mind game a little. Quick boost up here could be problematic. Hera hidden away and Kizia with a free walk up. Olga maybe not communicating cleanly. Little Z with a quick one dig of her own. See what goes down. Can they get the rest of the players up through connector? I think the dink might just do it to get Izzer off the angle. Sensei, car, sorry, trying to hold here and, and keep things clean, but the site is full. Bomb gone down. Going to be tough on the retake here. And they've obviously recovered some rifles. Tiny bit of utility available to try and get aggressive in towards CT. Now, the question is, do you necessarily have to go for this? They spin around and it does work on the trading. Car gets overwhelmed, and there it goes. I mean, MIBR, it, it's certainly a way to get your first round on the board, I guess. The difficulty now is replicating that. Yeah, I mean, it's always surprising when you see a team win on an eco. I mean, you love to see it, especially those 1Ds, right? When you get those, like, really crisp headshots, and that's what's so potent about a gun like that. It's not going to give you the spray potential that a rifle does, but if you hit that shot you have an opening that you might not necessarily have had previously. Unfortunately, that advantage is very swiftly going to fall away. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. You've got to be careful with rounds like that, you know, because you have um, the license to get aggressive, the license to do what you want, and you maybe have to rein that in in the next round. Now, they've not necessarily done that, right? And also, Fury have come back gun swinging. Pretty passive for the first sort of six, seven rounds. Uh, of the game and and suddenly they need to do something a bit different you got the double up setup and you've got them getting in your face now rather than just letting you come to them and it's something new for mibr to deal with and 
clearly they have not done so very well. So, um, yeah, it, it can kind of be a blessing in disguise for some teams losing out to the force buy, especially if you've got cash to work with. Mm. Keeps pressure on your economy, but I think in this case, it just gives them, you know, an invigorated spirit to to go for it, an MIBR of not responded in kind, as it were. Well, it looks like they're still making somewhat of a play for this, unfortunately. Gabby, yeah, oh, there you go. She's holding down that sight line. Valiant attempt there. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they pick up the, the AWP that MIBR dropped, so now we've got a double AWP set up, and we saw that last week and how absolutely devastating it can be here. You set up one towards B, you set up one in mid or over on the A site, and that makes it almost impossible to crack in, and for them to have had it, okay, I would say it's early, but it's, it's reasonably early, and MIBR, who were really looking to start to claw back into this who really need to pick up some rounds having those sight lines shut down so quickly is going to make it that little bit more difficult to bolster their way in that utility becomes so much more important now yep oh. gabby oh, over the top of the fire spotting an arm getting confident here on that awp and you know the bi ideas again going to be thwarted you know they they don't have too much of a contingency it seems where it's like right we're losing an opening pick and uh, a, a move here into a bomb site or an execute or even just mid control and immediately they go back to something else and i think sometimes you maybe have to kind of just commit to your original idea a nice connector flash comes in car gonna get clapped in fairness that's a huge frag and we'll see what they can do off the back of it right again though they're not all together, not all in the best of positions here. Mari from underneath. It's a little dodgy, but the info is in for Olga to trade. Three on two. Still got a bit of time. Not all the rotations are here as yet. And one, of course, in behind a smoke. The other at CT. Don't really have this information. And little Z yeah, goes for the dangerous cross and gets taken out. Fly not ready to trade. 1v3 now required. Certainly not going to be easy. AWP the first target, and the AWP will win out. Furia keeping them coming. And one on the board. A little surprised to see her push that. I mean, she knows Gabby's there. That's where the AWP kill just came from. And of course, you know that there's going to be somewhat of a crossfire. And speaking of, there was a great crossfire right here, in fact, uh, just to give over that information to Olga so she's able to get the cleanup beautifully done there. And again, it's Furia just completely shutting down the map. And this is one of my favorite things about Furia last week because they have such solid map control and their rotations always seem to be so clean. And this is what's making things that little bit more difficult for MIBR because they're struggling to read into that. And we, when we spoke about how important their utility was in the previous round there. And every single time, you know, they throw out a molly and it, gets extinguished and then there's a smoke in their faces so now they have very limited information okay you can kind of see where the smoke has come from but you you can't really glean too much more off of that and now fury are going for a massive information starving game they've completely given up mid and they're somewhat keeping themselves out of lines of sight so mibr have to make a relatively uninformed decision about where they want to go yeah, I think they've done really well with that, right? And it can kind of be risky to leave areas like middle open. And, and you know, there's so many avenues here of maybe working your way up short, slowly into window is kind of an obvious one. Also allows that connector pressure, which I think is what we're going to get here. But the fact that Fury have been able to do it for so long is, again, another worrying sign, right? You can just let them mm -hmm. walk into the site. We're confident enough in our setups that they will indeed work out. Now, we'll see. We've got kind of a variation execute coming in here just the one smoke towards ct and a few flashes over the top but an orc trapped in a triple can be a problem they deal with it in one and the site secure so it seems lil z onto that orc trying to follow the traces through the smoke not the easiest thing in the world spotted out the boost as well however kill comes in and they get down smart stuff three on three all coming in from the ct area got kits available Maybe going to try and boost up again, but no, not going to be the case. Flash comes over the top and a leg lands, but they've started to make tracks on towards the site itself. Olga taken down on low HP. Trade is there. Little Z hidden away, trying to create some space. Into the smoke goes Mari, but not going to work. Ninja does not come off. And MIBR, it does come off the back of Little Z, picking up that orb, right, and mm. finding it. But that looked like a much more uh, thought-out round 
go for it early before you've lost anyone, right? And and they're able mm -hmm. to break into the site at the very least and then go from there. Well, when we talk about how important that mid control is and the fact that Furia give up mid basically for free there. And of course, they had a three stack over towards the B site, MIBR. They don't really stall out in that one. They actually hit in onto the site, get in there as quickly as they can. And as you said, okay, they do lose one in order to gain that orb, but they hand it over to little Z and she just shuts down that A main entrance entirely. She... We talk about how powerful and impactful an AWP can be in when it's actually getting kills, but very seldom do we mention just how the presence of an AWP can do so much to shut down uh, a choke point, because you don't want to push that if you don't have to. Even with three people trying to boost up, trying to create AWP angles, you still don't want to peek that AWP unnecessarily, because you know how deadly it can be. And so because she has that in her hands and she can just shut down that entryway, she's able to secure themselves that round. Now, it is only their second round, so they got to kind of pivot off of this. Spam through the smoke, back at each other. We'll see Olga surviving on all... But 3 HP, meanwhile, Car once again, running rampant with this AWP, gets aggressive in towards the B-outs. We saw Gabby do it a few rounds ago on the uh, double AWP. Hera going to go down, not having the best of games. It's been a tough time out here on Mirage for Hera. Mm -hmm. So, and it just kind of continues. Unfortunately, they are very, very good, I think, at creating a bit of a distraction and catching these solo players on MIBR, right? Uh, the the confidence that they have to maybe leave one or two by themselves is perhaps ill-placed, right? Maybe we just need to group up and uh, and go for it. And that is indeed what they're going to try and hit here on the B-bomb site. Flashes over the top. It is simple. And Molotov splits them up, allows uh, Kizia to go down easily. Is a meanwhile coming in on that rotation. Things looking very good for Furia once again. One step ahead of the game. Bombs being dropped and only two opponents to eliminate here. Gabby smells a rat. I think she did just spot the player. And here's the player getting out. Is a meanwhile finding another from that jail window. Things looking very, very good here. Little Z, the only one. Maybe indeed give us some respect. Saw in a situation like this. Bit harder this time around, though, I think, because they're not all coming at you. They have no reason to. Yeah. I think at this point, you just kind of try and hold on to the open. That's exactly what she's uh, going to do here. One versus five, as you say, we've seen it before, but eh, a little bit more, a little bit more tough in this spot i must say car has been incredible she wasn't this standout last week and she's really really shown up today and it's really you know fun to see you know they keep handing her that off and she just keeps getting value uh, another thing we've kind of spoken about how important that utility is and something that you pointed out during that attempt at an execute it's how the molly splits up mibr and, and that's one of those key factors when you're thinking about how to use that utility how do you stop a rush from coming through you know mibr trying to be a little bit more um when i say inconsistent i just mean uh, creative right trying to change things up a little bit change up their pace a little bit they go for an aggressive push in that round but they immediately get stalled out by the molly and fury fury just seemed to be so dialed in when it's a when it's a, an aggressive push they have the utility available when it's a, a slower push they are able to starve information i'll oh, find the first once again going back in for more and does indeed land a leg but once again completely different spot this time around meanwhile kizia distraction out through middle they've got a nice crunch onto the a bomb site here mari as yet to be spotted only good for the one though is it with a quick rotation in from short We've broken into the site, two versus two. Molly's a bit too deep. Gabby could, but decides against the peak. And that means we're in a full-on post plant. Plenty of utility here for the CT side to work with. Kits and the like. So certainly flush out a few areas. Lil Z tries, but the flames get in the way. And Arkinia, with only 15 HP, is in a tough 1v2. Made her way in towards Palace. Ready to go on the peak for sure, but, you know, you've got to predict it at this point, right? Does manage to take down the Diffuser, instant trade. And as I said, kit's available, so no stress here for Gabby on the Diffuse. Even going to get to recover an AWP nice and quickly. So, 11 rounds in for Furia. Getting worse and worse as it goes on here for MIBR. Usually, this is a point where you kind of say, oh, well, they made it expensive. But let's be real. At this point, does it even matter? Furia are so stacked. We're so close to the half. This was a round that they needed to win. In fact, every round is a round that they need to win at this point. We're so close. I've got two rounds left until we hit the half. And 
things look so dire here for MIBR, and now Fury are looking to get crazy aggressive, and this is an aggression we haven't actually seen prior, and it just pays off. Yeah, it's a massive mid setup. There is fly coming in from behind, though. Quick trade always does benefit that T side of things, so will they stick around? Will they go for more, or will they just hand it to MIBR here? It looks like they're going to try and hand it for the most part. And indeed, entirely in the end. So, probably, you know, the best case scenario that I think MIBR could have hoped for there. You're putting a lot of resources into mid as well. If you are Furia, look down that all-important utility. There's not a lot remaining. Same to be said for MIBR. So, it's a, a well-spent battle here towards middle. But it is indeed the T-side coming out on top, I would say. Oh, well, uh... We certainly hope so. We certainly hope so. They definitely need it at this point. Now, they are heading into a fairly stacked A site with that bomb. B might be the better option, but of course we have cast division. They don't necessarily know this. And again, Fury have been doing very well to starve a lot of that information. So now we're going to see that execute come through. Can they make it in? Mari loves this angle. However, Ooh. the AWP of Car going to walk straight in. Flash comes around. They're expecting the A1S. And little Z is going to frag them all out, of course. 3K comes in. Three bullets, three kills. And Gabby now. I don't know. Maybe maybe you're just safe here. We are going into that, that final round, of course, in the next. Uh, there's, there's a bit of money for some of the players, but then some of them also relatively poor. Confident as ever, though, I guess, with 11. And give it a go. It doesn't work out. Lil Z in with another 4K to win MIBR around off of her own back. Um, and like I say, the, the buy will be there, but I think an extra M4 to drop across would have been really nice here. Oh, Little Z has been so good with these multi-kills. Okay, unfortunately, it's taken her more rounds than she would have liked to kind of warm up and get into that mode. But now that she's kind of hit her stride a little bit, she is so solid again. Huge boon for this team. Okay, aggression once again. Sure. <laughs> yeah, hey, it works, it works. Exactly. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's similar, you know, to the previous round, but it's a slight variation. It's a little bit of conditioning, right? They may be ready for aggression, but they don't quite know where. Oh, and that is a nasty one, little Z. With the molly, you know, not even sticking around that long, but get spammed down. That A1S is so annoying. Is he uh, trying to regain some control of middle here and, of course, get some numbers back for the T side? We're going to be tough. You're, of course, going to go for this final round of the half, but not going to be easy by any stretch. And, well, the peak is not coming in. Again, somewhat frustrating. Is he oh, going to get it in the back, I think. However, able to somehow make it across. I think a molly comes over the top that just obscures the vision enough. Car with an off angle on the unpreferred M4, of course, but creates enough space, getting the 12th in for Furia and a hell of a half from them. MIBR, a lot of work to do now on their CT side.
Yo, what up? Welcome back. <laughs> Safe to say, rough first half for MIBR. Uh, we don't do much beating around the bush here in the ESL Impact League, but uh, yeah, it's it's um, going to be a hard road back. CT side, dominant side at the moment, I guess. Starts here with the pistol, goes without saying. But for me, Furia, um, as as you said, as you nicely put it, is the home stretch now, isn't it? Right, that you just yeah. take it chill. Only four rounds required. It's not too much of a challenge in theory. Yeah. I must say that uh, Furia's aggressive defenses were... I mean, to be fair, all of their defenses were pretty difficult for MIBR, but the aggressive ones tended to really knock them off balance. And now that they're on the T side, we're going to see MIBR go aggressive? Okay. Pistol round's the best place for it. However, Carr has read into this. Again, maybe... You know, doing their homework here on the Furious side does get traded out, but a P250 in hand to better battle against the USP. That's a rough fight, and Hera can't get away. So eventually that Glock, the extra eight bullets coming in handy. And they've kind of faked things out towards A here, so we still have presence. And Kizia has a Molotov, so on the jump spot here, hoping to slow them down if they do indeed go B, which looks to be the case, as we can see, but... Olga, you know, oh, continuing to be annoying. They're trying to get the timing right here, and it looks like they might just Kizia kind of dropping back. Still only the one person, but executive voice maybe come in to call for the rotations. Meanwhile, she takes a reposition, but they've gained control of B, and now getting very aggressive, trying to be the hero of the round. It's not going to work out by the looks of things, though, and not able to get that utility down either. Meanwhile, Olga, you know, proving to be a real problem for the rotators. Is it going to be only one player going down? It maybe indeed looks to be the case. Little Z caught off, finished off. And now it is uh, dire straights if, if we're mm -hmm. using the straight. But this time for MIBR, right? They've lost out on the pistol. Um, really tough road now. Honestly, as much as that first engagement is a straight up trade, Trades tend to favor your attacking side. It'll favor your T's. So, uh, a bit of a bit of a misstep, I think, trying to go for that aggression. I see the idea behind it, but it does somewhat backfire there, and it gives so much map control over to Furia so early on in the round, and they're able to just kind of pivot off of that. Now, uh, on the CT side, Little Z again on the second round, buying up into that scout. Hopefully this time around it does pay off a little bit better. We're seeing a far more subdued defense here. And well, it's to be expected given their buy. They're just going to wait it out a little bit. Sometimes we do tend to see that gamble stack. Uh, but I think they realize that at this stage in the map, it's probably not the best idea. So keep it split. Try and hold things off for as long as possible. Give yourself time to rotate in and hopefully be able to mount that retake. Really just running the clock down though. Furia, you know, despite a clear upper hand in a round like this, um, not trying to go for any super early peaks. They will just kind of contact their way into B, but not even acting off of that, right? It is just is a spotting things out and uh, not feeling it on that B side of things. So they're going to run it back towards A late in the round, not super late. Still late nonetheless. And they have the sort of bare minimum utility if they want to go for the full execute here. Looks like they will go for something simple, but moving pretty quick off the back of it. Scout of Little Z in the perfect spot. Slight tag does indeed land. Crossfire set up here. Nade over the top could be deadly. Flash to back it up as well, results in two quick kills. This is not looking good. The cavalry on the way as well. These rifles have got to get in fast. There's also only 10 seconds left, for goodness sake. So the bomb is indeed isolated, and they are indeed walking into the meat grinder, panicking with very few seconds remaining. And that's exactly why they didn't go for that gamble stack. They were hoping that they would be able to get that information across and maybe slow down a little bit of the ingress. And they toss out quite a bit of that utility. They managed to get two of the kills before the execute even comes through. And at that point, you're, you're buying a lot of time for that rotation to come out. Of course, it was very touch and go towards the end of the round, but it does work out. Now again, we're going to see a nice split, but look at this potential rush up apps. Okay, they do stall out a little bit. They've spotted, of course, that there's a molly. They've spotted the jump peeker. But it looks like they are going to commit to this. Yeah, a lot faster this time around. So really testing the metal of the B hold. And well, it looks good. Fly Ooh. in for two. One stolen away, of course. That third also looked pretty good. Got the deagle out now. Full arsenal available. Gabby 
upgrading slightly onto a Tech 9 here. And I mean, any damage is nice this early on into the half, but yeah, really solid hold from MIBR. And I think this is maybe a trend that uh, we'll see across the course of a fair few teams where I think we have a lot of really solid individuals um, who indeed can pull out these massive rounds and they're probably going to have a bit more of an impact for you on the CT side these days. I think the T sides are where it is kind of tougher, um, especially on Mirage at the moment. You know, you have to have a real solid sense of timings and reads on your opponents. So MIBR looking a lot more comfortable is the point I'm trying to make. Well, they need to keep that up here because, of course, they've only really got maybe one more round here of having a huge advantage in terms of weaponry. Maybe two, maybe two. We'll see how, how Furia play this. But they need to kind of pivot off this as much as possible. And you start to wonder, well, maybe the CT side is what they were leaning into when they went for this map pick. But with such a huge deficit, they've got such a long road ahead of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's really tough for, uh, you know, any caliber of team. This is always a hard spot to be in. Um, and you just have to ignore the score at the top, take it round and round, really. And uh, mentally, it can be quite taxing, for sure. Ooh. Here we go, though. Little Z. Picking up a frag, of course. Spotting the information down below. Nice nade. Nice setup for the rest of the squad to come in. Uh, just Gabby on the deke. And, I mean, yeah, fair. Not a bad shot at all. Any more for any more, she says. <laughs> Feeling pretty confident with it, but early peak and takes a bullet to the cranium, of course. So MIBR, no real stress at this point in time. Like you say, uh, I'm pretty sure they'll go for a buy here just to keep that pressure on. They've got so many rounds to play with. So um, again, another test, right? And I don't think we've seen the, the craziest and deepest strat from Furia in that first rifle. Well, now they're going to be back into it with a little bit more strength here. But of course, they know that they need to kind of wedge themselves back in a little bit. That's an early molly. And while it does delay Little Z from getting into position, she is going to be able to. But again, they're not actually going for that mid push. They've got a little bit of a split here as the bomb kind of leans over towards B at the moment. Looking to see if they can find themselves a nice early pick and then kind of pivot off of that. The last round was, of course, a little bit of a throwaway because they only had pistols. Now that they're in on a buy, we're going to see a little bit more of that strategic depth that Furia have really shown time and again, particularly on their CT side. Hopefully they can bring that through here on the T side and kind of close this out. These are just chilling. I think certainly going to be a focal point for this round. They're set up for an A split with more emphasis on the split side of things, right? <laughs> Maybe get a player into window. This is dangerous as well. Oh, but Olga going to get away with it. Mari, meanwhile, finding another. Olga keeps on charging. Kizia, yes, indeed, gets a kill. Uh, luckily, you would say towards ramp there, but just caught out in the open. That frag car kind of giving her life away is for information and indeed they're able to capitalize off the back of it through the murder hole called that for a reason and there <laughs> it is finally fury are able to break in get around it didn't take them too long either so mibr it gets more and more stressful um yeah that's that's a bit of tech that i think can get slightly annoying when you're in the smoke you can see out of it quicker than they can see in i think that's mm. kind of where that comes from um it's olga peaking or something yeah i don't know I don't know. Yeah. Olga a bit sneaky. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it works out, and it's something that Furia needed to get going here, as MIBR looked to take a little bit more of an aggressive push here. This is, this is dangerous. I do like that smoke to try and deny the sight line, but oh, it's beautiful. A little bit of a one-way there. Great pivot off of that. And that's going to be Furia. Play it out. Yeah, rough start. They tried to go for a quick run boost, didn't really uh, pan out. And I think pretty much the perfect setup to deal with that. So MIBR, again, it's really great to see that they are kind of unfazed, right, by the score, by some of their aggression not really working. They're still wanting to get their uh, trademark play style in, right, where Furia were much safer, much happier to let them come to the bomb sites. MIBR are always fiending for a fight. <laughs> and here it's gone pretty well just all about capitalizing of course Arkinia 
give up mid and well they quickly bounce on that fact right not really going to be anyone to pick up the pieces right a reposition towards jungle or maybe someone to come in from ladder room to watch it from behind so a nice little read to get a player in a really solid spot to cut off rotations well, fury are moving towards a relatively unprotected b oh no Oh, that's heartbreaking. So many angles to check, but that's going to be the go button to start moving in towards B, which, as I said, is relatively unprotected. Oh, Hera. Uh, needs a bit of assistance, maybe, or maybe not. I think it's awkward for Fly. She runs out of ammo there. Only seven seconds here for Gabby. Trying to find some kills on the way out, but the round not going to happen. MIBR back in, right? And Furia, um, tough in the beginning, and... A small idea gets cut off by that one thing that you hope doesn't happen when you're holding an angle. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm, I'm in a great spot here if a player doesn't come up ladder room behind me. And well, that's exactly what happens. So, you know, <laughs> the one thing you were hoping didn't happen does. MIBR, though, mm -hmm. again, keeping at it and looking much more comfortable here on the CT side. Yeah, I mean, you really start to think, well, this was the idea for this map. But of course, because it was their pick, they didn't have to get a side. Uh, well, they didn't get to pick their side. You start to wonder, well, maybe they should have let Furia pick it. Yeah. That, of course, with Vertigo being their usual map, maybe they wanted to make sure that they get the, the side pick on that one. A lot of thought probably went into this, but with MIB are still having quite a bit of a battle ahead of them. And we're seeing such a huge contest here in mid. These opening kills going to be so impactful. Yeah, that one's pretty massive as well. Carl leading the charge here. Great flash in to allow Olga some space. And Arkinia on the reface, maybe arguably, you know, needed to stay safe there to just keep the numbers as, as even as possible. Still would have only been a four on three. Furia, massive control here. And surely they can get it done off the back of this. Sarah catches Olga with an over-aggressive peak of her own. So we'll see how it pans out. Left on low HP, right? It's still going to be very, very tough here. Kizia trying to find the right angle, the right timing to drop the bomb, cut them off. Molly comes in, sort of makes the decision for her. And, and Furia, uh, maybe for once in their lives, have got a lot of time to work with. Bomb going down. Nice angle found from Kizia. Can't get the frag, though. Nade doesn't finish it off. That is even more heartbreak here for MIBR. Really, really rough stuff. Kizzy are going to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting. They're in together. They're ready to go on this retake, but never easy, right? And they're so deep into their positions, able to play off of each other in and around connector, planted for both these players. You know, it doesn't get much better than this at the end of the day. You're going to try and go for an India. Quick find from Mari in a second as well. I don't think the smoke quite covered. 15 to 7 then, 8 to do it in as Furia. They keep the rounds coming. It might not be the cleanest of T-sides, but they are getting more than their fair share. I mean, you say eight to do it, but look at the eco. Ugh. Match point, and this is what MIBR have in the tank. <sighs> so Vertigo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you you would assume so, unless there's any major uh, mess ups here from Fury. Oh. Okay, okay, that could here we go. A little, little bit of a lull in action. Thought it was all going to pop off for a second, but it was just <laughs> a slow start considering the utility. First head found, little Z, great angle. Flash comes in, but the tag is there. Looking for some more maybe on the jump up. Go for the shot, just the information. Arkinia getting in behind, can't quite finish the frag, but the damage keeps rolling in here. Minute and oh, five left moving. on the clock and... Yeah, where are Fury are going? What are the positions? No, oh, is the uh, caught nearly. Somehow doesn't take any damage from that, but I'm going to know exactly where she is. Meanwhile, the A bomb site is, for all intents and purposes, abandoned. I'm going to go down, and this is where it gets a lot tougher on these four spies, right? You've got no utility. You've got one kit to get into the site, and I think Fury are not going to let you take any space at all here. Nice shots are landing. But they can't quite finish them, right? And they might need it to have indeed finished these frags before breaking into no the way. site, he says. But here we go. Deagle's leading no the charge ways. and looking good. And little Z finishes off Mari from an earlier tag. MIBR, they'll hang on. 
Maybe a little bit of overconfidence there from Furia. They get caught out so... I won't say easily. I think that a lot went into that round from MIBR. They play that... I mean, that might be one of the cleanest rounds they've had. Obviously, the headshots don't come through as consistently as we would like, but they're able to kind of use cover really effectively. So when they get a little bit of a kill, they don't get over aggressive. They don't get overconfident. They pull back. They know that they've done a ton of damage. Hopefully, you know, they were kind of relying on their ability to get some cleanup later on as the round progresses. They don't want to overstay their welcome on that initial peak that gets the initial damage. Now they're able to buy in once again, but okay, okay, I was about to say, usually they win the eco and then they lose the next round. But with this being a Furia eco, okay, they're, they're getting themselves back into this. Yeah, these are your nice momentum builders, right? And it's very good to win a round like this without losing a single player. Yes, you're not planning on losing rounds when uh, there's 15, <laughs> but especially on the CT side of things, uh, the economy still can come into play even when you're winning rounds. So just feels good as well, you know, not losing anyone. You can fully zone in, fully focus. There's nothing like, ah, oh, for goodness sake, why did I repeat that? Or what a lucky frag or something like that. You, you don't have to get hung up on what's happened uh, in the eco when you find it cleanly. So, well, I mean, th this is a pretty important round. If you think about it, we got three more rifles for MIBR to even things up to an overtime. That's it. So mm -hmm. it kind of, again, begins here and no AWP still for the Fury side. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued what MIBR have got up their sleeve. Let's see. We got Lil Z posted up towards A, but with a pretty quick pivot towards mid if necessary. And that's really important. When we talk about how a dynamic op can be such a huge difference maker. So that's exactly the position that she's putting herself into. Slightly lower defense over towards B, but with Furia kind of leaning over towards A, I mean, this could be the perfect positioning for MIBR. With little Z noticing that not much is happening over towards mid at the moment. Some of that utility is going to come over onto A, and that's going to call the rotation from her to get her into position. Uh, this is where it gets tough on the A-bomb side, though. They've, they've slowed down. They've gone for a contact play, right? Very quick couple flashes. That's it. No real smokes to cover off angles. They're getting those out now, though. Not looking panicked. However, mm. fly just goes flying round the corner. Just get taken down after one. Little Z missing out on the shot, trying to get the wall bang here, but just an inch off the mark. Eight over the top, certainly going to do some damage, but you know, you've got to stay alive. And oh, up on the boxes is, uh, however, spotted out and this time successfully wall banged down. Bomb once again planted for this connector side of the site. They're both here. They can both play around it. Olga with somewhat of an off angle. Flash comes in. It's ineffective. And Mari going to have her work cut out, not on the mark, a little closer, but the defuse will be in successfully. And there's not much she can do about that one. MIBR, it looked kind of shaky, you know, working their way back into that site, especially this from, from Fly, you know, it, it mm. was a wild play to say the least. They get it done. I'd been so curious about Mari's positioning in that because she flanks all the way around through mid and you can see that they're going for, well, a flank. But she doesn't push in with the rest of the team, possibly going for like a more of a surprise attack towards the, the later side of the round. But by that point, most of her team has been taken down. So, of course, she's the only one that survives at the end of that round because she never wound up in the engagement. And you, you spoke about how important timings are for your T side. And, and that's one of those important moments. Maybe if she'd been there in time, she makes a difference. Hell, maybe she doesn't at all. But of course, she manages to survive that round. And this one's looking a little bit better for Furia as they get that opening pick. But the bomb's going to start hightailing it over towards B, it seems. Yeah, maybe again, a slight overthink. They have found another frag on the same bomb site. And this is a much better time to go for the contact play as well, by the way, when you know you work your way into an early kill, you can then overwhelm with the numbers. But they've drawn all the rotations, which is one thing, right? It's it's so tense. It's so close. Mm. Surely not going to go for something as crazy as this. But then Aww. you create space for stuff like this to happen, where Fly gets a bit cheeky, able to find a double, does get traded back. So they've earned the numbers back in their favor once again for Furia. But the, the jig is up, right? They know that they're headed towards B, I think. Olga well. waiting, maybe, for the information to come in for Gabby. Certainly Jeez. keeping the CT side guessing, to say the least. Oh, nice shot from Lil Z as well. Going to wipe out the B approach. And now they're hearing the nades coming out on 
from the A side of things. Plant comes in. It's not necessarily planted for Palace, and Little Z's here pretty quickly. Olga holding and waiting, but I don't think she's going to expect them here. This mm. early contact orb is successful. And as I mentioned, that bomb is not quite in the perfect spot for the Palace plant. Maybe that's the idea, though, right? Time ticking down at the moment, holding the angle on the edge of the smoke could be the move. Ninja attempt, but no, Gabby's read it. Beautiful stuff. Of course you don't go for the hold in a situation like this. Hera going to try it again. It's another fake out. There's no. not a lot of time. Knife what? is out, what? and we are running out of time. Gabby just <laughs> trying to bank on that hiding in the smoke. There's no time for the defuse. And that's the way that Furia win it. I mean, it's one way of doing it for sure. <laughs> Goodness gracious me. And look, you know, yeah, very, very chill, of course, after a round like that. <laughs> but wow. um, yeah, wow. I mean, it felt inevitable at the turn of the half, but certainly had to work for it there, did Furia. That knife at the end there, if that had resulted in an actual knife kill, I, I probably would have lost it. I'll be honest.